Hey guys, Redstone Ben here today. So you might notice I'm not in Minecraft and that's because in this video I'm going to show you how to design textures. So what inspired me to do this is I was looking at my friend Pandora Bones channel and lately he's been doing videos of speed art for his texture pack that uh, he's working on. So he's going to release, release his texture pack when he gets to 100 subs. So make sure you go subscribe to him, you know, get him up there. He's a really good YouTuber. I don't think he gets as many views and subs uh, that he deserves. Um, so yeah, I was watching his videos and he was doing some really good uh, textures. Like I just watched his stone sword speed art and it was actually really good. Like that is a texture pack that I would actually use. Uh, so I decided, you know what? I do tutorials. Why don't I do a tutorial on how to make a texture? So this isn't necessarily how to make a texture pack because there are many other videos out there showing you how to do that but not a lot of videos showing you how to make good textures how to actually design them like the art aspect of it so in this video uh, I'm going to show you how to do it so the first thing you want to do is download a program called paint.net now it isn't a website it's a program uh, if you go to paint.net to download it you won't be able to download it because that's not where you download it. That's some guy's painting website. You want to go to getpaint.net. Uh, so once you download it and you install it and you do the whole shebang, everything that it asks you to do, open it up and you will see a screen somewhere like this. If you don't see this with them all grayed out, then you're going to want to go file and then click close here. So once you do that, everything will be grayed out. The first thing you want to do is go up to the right by the X button and you're going to want to uncheck this the little three little things on top of each other so you don't see the layers and make sure that the hammer and the little color button are both checked so the next thing you want to do is go up here and click file and then click new so this is where we decide the resolution of the texture pack so if you've downloaded downloaded one before even if it's a resource pack uh, it will say something like 8x8, eight eight, which is smaller than default, 16x16, 16 16, which is default, 32, 64, 128, uh, 256, and 512. I've only ever seen like one 512 texture pack, and you need like a lot of uh, GPU power to uh, be able to use them. Uh, so we're going to do a 16x16 16 16 texture pack today. So in these boxes, make sure that maintain aspect ratio is unchecked. Click six, type 16 in the width box and 16 in the height box. That's pretty self-explanatory. So click OK and it will open up this tiny little white square. What you're going to want to do is hold down the control key and hit plus all the way up and eventually it will stop. That's the maximum zoom level. So uh, the next thing you will might notice is that there's a white background. If we left that white background and you save your texture like, oh, this is great, just made an awesome texture, and then you upload it to Minecraft and you go to play, you'll be holding a huge white square with some colors on it. So we want to get rid of this white background. So what we're going to do is click this little top left option in the toolbar. And once we have that, just drag over the whole white background and click the delete key. So now you'll see this checkered background. Now the checkered blocks aren't the pixels, but uh, to view how many pixels there are, we can go up to the file toolbar kind of area here and see this little grid option. We click grid, it will outline where the pixels are. So now I'm going to hit uh, the pencil tool here just to show you guys. These are what the pixels are. This is how big the pixels are because we're fairly zoomed in. So now if I hit Control Z or Control Z, you might call it, it will undo. So now all we have to do is design whatever we'd like to design. So this video is mainly the different tools that you can use to make your designs a lot better and do it a lot faster than most. So we have, I'd say three tools that you're gonna be using the most, actually four. Pencil, eraser, paint bucket, line tool those are the four main things uh, and then you also might use the color picker to uh, choose the colors that you've used before so let's do the first thing so we're going to take our pencil tool 
go over here to the colors window, click more, and this will show you how to customize your colors. I'm going to use this default kind of brown color that they have, and then I'm going to customize it. So I'm going to make it a little darker on this V row here, and then also make it kind of brighter so it's more of a brown. I just move the sliders around until I get a good brown that I like. Uh, so I can draw lines here. We'll do something like that. Oh no, we made a mistake. We're going to go back to the toolbar and click the eraser key. Uh, now up here, there will be a couple options. The first thing you want to do is click here in this hardness spot and drag all the way up until it's 100%. The next thing is you want to go over to brush width and click the minus sign so it's one. Uh, that will only erase one pixel everywhere you click. The next thing is this little line, this little squiggly line. You want to click that once. That will turn off anti-aliasing. Uh, the reason why people use paint.net is because it's great for uh, being able to disable anti-aliasing so you can draw in just pixels. And then you also want to click this once, the little circle. Uh, so now we have our eraser tool. We can click on the pixel and it will disappear. Uh, so now I'm kind of looking at it, and uh, I don't really like that brown color, so I'm going to click my paint bucket tool, make the tolerance 50%, so I'm going to leave that, make sure it's a solid color. Uh, go over here, again, make sure anti-aliasing is disabled, and then choose my color. So I kind of want a darker brown, so I'm going to do something like that, and go back here and just click on the brown. So, as you will see, it will just make it brown. Now, if you're having problems and you see kind of this faded color around where you've painted, that means you still have anti-aliasing on. So, if I hit Control-Z, turn anti-aliasing on, you will see that when I paint this, you get these translucent boxes around it. So, again, make sure anti-aliasing is off. I'm going to say that no more times because I've said it enough. Okay. So now we can hit enter just to get rid of that little floating piece and we can color in the middle. So let's do a gray from here. There we go. So we have the, uh, the kind of ball of the handle. Uh, so now we can make a little handle piece where you're going to hold it. Uh, so let's use the line tool. So we're going to go down here where it says line slash curve. You can also hit O and it will select the, select the line tool. Uh, so now make sure anti-aliasing is off and brush width is set to one. Uh, everything else you can leave the same. Now we can choose our color. So I'm going to use the same gray and I'm just going to drag up like, oh no, I made a mistake. So I'm going to hit control Z again. I'm going to drag up from there and go around three, three, four blocks up. Now let's do three. Hit enter. Uh, now I might want to, yeah, that's good, okay. So I'll take my pencil tool, fill it in. Uh, we can even do a darker one if we want, like that. Um, so now what about the kind of crossbar? I forget what it's called, to be honest, but uh, to stop your opponent's sword from slicing your fingers off. Well, let's get our brown. So we're going to find the color picker tool here. So the shortcut key is K, but it looks like a little eyedropper. Click that and uh, now all you have to do is click where the color that you want to get back onto your palette, and that's the brown. So I'm gonna click on the brown, and now I can switch back to my pencil tool and just use it. So as you can see, I've done that. Go like this, uh, like that. Okay, uh, now I can kind of round that off and go like that. There we go. So we now have our hilt. And now we can make the blade. So we're going to go back to our line tool. Uh, let's do a light gray like that. And now we can make our lines that go all the way up like that. Let's do a, now we'll do a lighter one in the middle. Whoops. Gotta go back. Hit enter to get rid of the selection and go to a darker one like that. And I don't know, I think it needs to be thicker. So I'm going to add another line on the outside here. And like, oops, control Z, I went too far. There you go. Uh, now we can 
make these lines up there. Oh my god, my textured skills are horrible. Uh, and let's paint buckets. So we're going to click paint bucket again, anti aliasing's off. And we're going to go back to a light gray. Shit, <laughs> I messed it up here. We'll use a pencil tool. Go all the way up like that. Uh, color picker our gray just to round off that and there we go that is our sword really ugly I know I can turn off grid and you can see the colors a little better um, but I, I really hope uh, you're better than me at this but uh, definitely check out Pandora Bones he's done amazing textures um, if you do do a 32 by 32 texture you will have a lot more chance to put detail and shadows unlike this uh, but yeah, so there's my sword. Now, how do we save it? How do we put it into the game? Well, if you've made texture packs before, you should know that. Uh, but if you haven't, this tutorial isn't really for that. Uh, there's a ton of other videos to watch how to make a custom texture pack. And that will show you how to upload the files and then upload that resource pack to your game. Um, but for now, if we want to save the file to later upload to a resource pack, we can click File up in the top left corner, go Save As, and then choose what we want, we want to call it. So I'm going to say um, Stone Sword, okay? And now choose where I want to save it, so I'll just do Desktop, and just click Save. Uh, make sure you leave it as Auto Detect, and just hit OK. It will save and then you can now close down paint.net so as you can see here we have our texture right here and that is our stone sword so we can now upload that file to our resource pack and rename it as stone underscore uh, sword and dot png and it's in the game so yeah uh, definitely go check out Pandora bones uh, he's really wanting to get to 100 subs and then he's going to release his texture pack, which I really want to see because I'm actually going to use it. So yeah, go check him out, subscribe, watch his videos, he's a really cool guy. Uh, but other than that, um, yeah, I, I guess I'll see you next time guys. Peace. Get that